Okay, uh, welcome to the session seven of ARM development course. I'm very happy to interact with you again. So in this class, before I start teaching you more on instructions, how to use them for different purposes, the most important thing is for us as a programmer should be able to provide some values or constants along with a program into our code okay, for the instructions to execute. So that will involve these two operations ok, we may do some operations the barrel shifter in the CPU may do some rotate or shift operations or we will be providing some constants which will be used internally in the program. Now today we will concentrate only on what are the different ways ARM accepts the constant values and how it operates on them ok. So this is the start of uh, learning the instruction set because this is going to be there in every instruction that you may encounter especially all the data processing instructions will have some may have some constants which are passed along with the instruction. So I thought first I will explain how what are the different ways that can be provided to the instruction and it will be mixed with any other data operations ok. So I all of you I want all of you to pay um, attention to this it is very interesting part of the instruction set and uh, I wish you will understand and follow this and then try out all this in your simulator then you our concepts will become much more clear ok. So let us get into this. So you know what all different operations could be performed you, know, you might have studied in your bachelor's course given a 32 bit data uh, what do you have in a register we could do various operations on it you could shift it to the left the bit positions or we can shift it to right there are two ways of shifting one is called logical and arithmetic. If you know in arithmetic shift the specific important thing that we need to pay attention to is the sign bit of the value and all of you are by now familiar with two's complement I suppose and for an example if suppose you have a number ok 1 1 0 sorry about 0 so big ok assume this is a 4 bit number you know that this is a sign bit right. So uh, if it is a, a, a sign bit a signed number it will be interpreted as a negative number then how do you find out the actual value you find the inverse of all this and add 1 to it which will be 0 0 1 1 plus 1 will be 1 0 0 that is minus 4 ok. Now, now suppose if I do a shift right ok what I am I doing I am making the MSP bit position to the lower side of the bits that means I am actually reducing the value if I right shift it by 1 I am I am actually reducing it or dividing it by 2 ok. So, or it should be it should become like this ok, when I right shift it it should become 1 1 1 0. Now what is this value you again do the same thing is it a negative yes even after shifting it turns out to be a negative value because MSB is set. So, how do you find out the equivalent uh, number of this you complement all of them 0 0 0 1 and then plus 1 you do then it becomes 2 that means minus 4 here has become minus 2 here by shifting it by 1 bit to the right. So, this is what is called arithmetic shift right ok. So, what you what you need to do is when you are doing a arithmetic shift you are interpreting this number as some binary number and it could be a signed or unsigned number. So, if it happens to be a signed number I you want to preserve the sign bit of the number 
So when it is doing the shift it should move the same sign width along with the numbers. So effectively that is the difference between arithmetic shift and a logical shift right. What is logical shift right? If you do a logical shift right this will become 0 1 1 0. So you are not preserving the sign bit this is called logical shift right whereas this shift is called arithmetic shift right. Now you may wonder why there are no arithmetic shift left let us try. Now when you want a number to be shifted well you are actually multiplying by 2 why because this put position whatever is the number if it moves to the left it is gaining more value in terms of value it is gaining more. So when you are shifting it this way you will be filling it with 0 here on this side so suppose this is the input you know, minus 4 you have taken and then you are shifting it right. Uh, left you will be making it like this. So, you are back will you know the right side it will be filled with 0. So, it is same as logical shift left that is why there is no separate uh, logical shift left, but there are uh, two different rights it could be logical shift right or admin shift right. Now, how does the programmer inform the processor they have to mention a particular acronym in the instruction so that processor knows whether it has to sign extend it or not ok. So, this is very important thing uh, you should be familiar with before we get into this. So, I thought I will uh, explain you this ok ok. Now, apart from this there are so many other uh, ways uh, this can be done uh, different operations could be done let us see all of them in this class ok. Now, let us first see what is the general format of a data processing instruction. You have to remember the data processing means it could be any of the operations even move operation is a data processing instruction, but it could be and I am not sure whether you will be able to see from your seat, but I will read it out for you these are all different operations binary boolean uh, you know uh, operations and exclusive or subtract or add or add with carry or compare or move they are all called data processing instructions. Now, what am I showing here this is the format of an instruction if you remember the ARM instruction is of 32 bits wide all instructions are of 32 bits. So, you should remember that now what is where is this instruction stored it is stored in the instruction memory and it is stored 4 byte aligned address and R15 which happens to be a program counter accesses the memory and then fetches this particular instruction any any instruction which is there in the memory and now after fetching it goes into the decode side stage of the pipeline where this instruction is interpreted. Now for a decode logic to understand the instruction it should have a standard format which is unambiguous so that the decode logic will be able to understand what is being conveyed in this 32 bit of information which happens to be one instruction. Now let us go one by one now what are these 4 bits this is called conditional fields what is this if you remember I mentioned that every instruction can be combined with a condition that is if that instruction needs to be executed or not whether that instruction has to be executed always or it has to be executed only when some condition is met. If you remember I mentioned that add eq that means add instruction will be executed that addition will be performed only when 0 flag is set. So, when that particular execution enters the execute state stage of the pipeline the processor looks at this 4 bit value and based on this it decides whether it has to be executed always if it is to be executed always it should be filled with 1110 otherwise it has to, if some other condition will be there which will be comparing with the CPSR flags and if it satisfies it will execute the instruction otherwise it will skip the instruction. So, that is why the conditional flag is sitting here. 
Now what is this 0 0 it is implied that this is a data processing instruction and then comes so once it is a data processing instruction the rest of the things are you know uh, interpreted the different way. Uh, this is not a standard format maybe the R and, and other register locations are fixed, but other play bits will be modified or changed based on the particular instruction which are which is being considered, but it will be unambiguous between one instruction to the other. So, now we are showing what I am showing here is the data processing instruction format and then after this 0 0 is encountered then it will know that okay this is a data processing instruction which is coming in. Now let me see what is the value of i here. So this i is an immediate operator. Okay. So if i equal to zero, it will interpret the twelve bits of the lower twelve bits of the instruction as a eight bit shift operation followed by a register RM. Now if you remember again, RM is a one of the general purpose register. So, how many registers we have in the ARM processor 16 registers, so it could be interpreted as 0, 0, 0 to or 4 ones, so 0 to 15. So, based on this number it will either pick up R0, R1, R2 or R50 whatever is the instruction which is mentioned here. Now, what is RM? RM is the second operand to the AMU, okay. So, if you remember there are two operands that can be fed to ALU one directly coming from the register file to ALU the other one comes through a barrel shifter if you remember again the operation that barrel shifter does it does it in one cycle you know the first phase of the cycle and then operand is made available to the ALU the second operand and first operand is directly read and then the result is written back into RT. Now, Whenever I say RN, you should know that the operand which is coming from register file is directly fed to the ALU. It does not come through any ALU or any modification or barrel shifter or anything, okay. So, it is directly fed into the ALU. RM is the other operand which is called operand 2, will come through barrel shifter. Now, barrel shifter also may do some changes to RM or based on the instruction it may have not have any impact of RM it will be a short circuit then RM will directly come into IALU. I will show you different examples where you can you will be able to map this with the actual instruction. Now what is the result coming out that result coming out of IALU has to be written into RG that is a destination. So, it could be written into any registers one among the 16 registers that can be written into. Okay, so you know R and RM and RD are all 4 bit wide in the instruction format. Now, where is it located? RN is located here, RD is located here, and RM can be here or it need not be there. If suppose I happens to be 0, there is no RM mentioned, it is a direct immediate value. Now, what do we mean by immediate value? The immediate value means it is part of the instruction. If you see it this whole 12 bit content is has come from the instruction that means it is coded by the assembler into the instruction and it is kept in the memory that is instruction memory and when the processor was fetching the instruction it has come along with that. Now, if suppose the operand is coming from RM one of the then that means it is using this instruction is using a already existing value in one of the registers as a operand. Okay, or it could take both things that is some part of the you know instruction some part of the operand is taken from RM and then what operation need to be performed on the contents of RM is provided by the constant that is it is as come with the instruction which uh, which is interpreted in a different way and I will explain you in the subsequent uh, session here today. So, barrel shifter takes this value and accordingly it operates on this RM and then gives the result into ALU. Now, how does the ALU know what it is supposed to do with these two operands because it can it knows that okay RM is coming from this number and RM is coming through barrel shaker or directly, but what is that arithmetic logic can be supposed to do? It could do add or subtract or move that is what this opcode is for. This field this is again a 5 bit field or sorry 4 bit field 
which will explain what operation it is supposed to do on the operands ok. So, this much you understood now let us see what is this S for if you remember I mentioned that in the instruction you can say move or move S yes. when I say move S yes, that means that is a execution of that particular instruction will impact the CPS or flags the conditional flags who are what are which are the conditional flags carry flag zero flag or negative or um, overflow flag. So, if this bit is set suppose if you are mentioned in your instruction move yes then assembler will set this bit 1. So, then what will happen the uh, processor will know ok uh, the programmer wants this instruction to affect the CPS or flags. So, whatever operation is then based on what is the result coming into RD it will set those flags. Suppose if the assemb the programmer has not mentioned yes in the instruction then assembler will interpret it and make this bit as 0 then processor when it looks at it it will know that ok this instruction is not supposed to impact the CPSR flag. So, let me not change anything with the CPSR and do only the operation what is you know requested by this instruction. So, this is the way the processor interprets the instruction and this is the way the assembler encodes your assembly instructions into a binary format and it fits into the 32 bit format. So, that processor understands that and accordingly up acts on it ok. Now, there may be two possibilities in in yesterday's session in last session I mentioned that the move operands are move instructions are single operand instruction, but you may wonder that there are two registers mentioned, but I say it is single operand please remember here operand is only this R 1 R 0 is always this particular value mentioned here is a destination register it is not an operand ok. R 1 is moved into R 0. So, there is a only single operand coming now please remember R 0 or R 1 is a anything it could be from R 0 to R 15 any one of this based on the values of R D. Now, R 0 is what it is actually R D here. So, if this instruction has to be there R 0 would have been R D would have been coded as 0 0 0 1 that means sorry all zeros. that means it is R 0 and R 1 is what always in a single operand instruction that operand is assumed to be R m not R n. So, wherever R m is supposed to be that place it will make 0 0 0 1 to indicate that ok this the it is a single operand instruction and the operand happens to be a R 1. So, there will be 1 here and to indicate that destination register is 0 there will be a 0 here. Now, what happens to R n? R n will be ignored ok. How will the processor know that it has to ignore R n because R n also can have any value from 0 0 to 1 1 1. So, it is a valid value, but based on the op code it will know that ok move is supposed to have 1 1 0 1. So, if op code is 1 1 0 1 it will not look at this value here and it will know that it is a move op operation. So, it does not have two operands. So, it is R n is ignored. Now, you may wonder why in a single operand instruction R n is not considered and R n is considered because you have a flexibility here only with R m that you can do some of barrel shifter operation before feeding it that value into the ALU. Now, for a move instruction what is the need for ALU to come into picture because this is the way it is structured. So, if it is a move ALU will just pass on this value out to R D. So, it will R m will come if barrel shifter operation is required based on suppose some you know LSL or something else you have mentioned here then it will operate on that R 1 and then pass on this value to R D and it will go to register bank again back to register bank. So, this is the way the in ARM processor inside interprets your instructions. Now, what about two operand is a simple example R 1 and R 2 are two operands then you will easily you will be able to map it R 1 happens to be R n. So, in the location of R n it will have 1 and then R 2 happens to be R m. So, in this location there will be 2 and R d happens to be 0. So, R d will be 0. 
so and opcode will say that it is a add instruction so wherever add is it will say here 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 so that opcode will be put so that is the way it is interpreted I hope you understand this now I have shown one more arrow here this is a immediate value which is coming along with the instruction now you have to remember when this instruction was fetched it has come along with the instruction now this is executed after two cycles in the execute stage that time this value is passed on to the pipeline registers and then made available to the barrel shifter by taking out this value which was there part of the instruction and then it is fed to the barrel shifter so that it can operate on it. Now how this immediate values are interpreted is what is going to be explained in this session ok. Now let us go one by one. Now operand is actually this operand 2 field this is completely a 12 bit field ok. So based on the value of i if it is 0 it will be interpreted that a 8 bit value is used for shift related operation and this is the register value that is rm which is the input to the barrel shifter. If suppose i happens to be 1 then if this instruction will be the 12 bits will be interpreted this way that means the complete thing is a immediate constant there is no rm here. So it is not taking any value from the register everything is coming from the immediate constant only and then some operation is performed by the barrel shifter on this immediate operand and then given to the ALU. So this is what you see at a another arrow coming to the barrel shifter in the previous slide. Now let us see what all you can represent. Now immediate operand may be a register as I mentioned it could be a register or an immediate value ok. Now based on the i bit it will decide ok if it is i bit is 0 it will interpret this bit combinations as you know uh, rm followed by a shift operation otherwise it will interpret as uh, values like first 8 bits will be interpreted as some immediate constant followed by what operation rotate operation needs to be performed on it. Do not worry even if you do not follow this fully remember that there is a part of the field in section field which is interpreted in two different ways based on the particular bit set in the i flag that is enough. How it is interpreted with the actual instruction I will show you so that it will become very clear to you pay attention ok remember what I am showing and then with a register you say 8 bit value of shift operation. Suppose you say that one operand is coming from RM how many bits will come 32 bit value will come from the one of the registers in the register file and then you will perform a shift operation based on this 8 bit value. How this 8 bit value is interpreted I will explain to you. If it is an immediate value the 8 bit value is here and then some 4 bit rotate operation is performed on it. So no RM is coming here so there is no register content for doing a rotate operation. So uh, the barrel shifter does not take any value from register file but it takes only the immediate constant coming from the pipeline register and perform some operation based on the instruction ok. I hope you understand the difference between these two formats let us go forward. Now I am going one more deep level here I mentioned ok one operand is coming from RM that so some operation the barrel shifter is supposed to do on the contents of this 32 bit value if RM happens to be 1 that means R1 contents are taken if it happens to be 2 the R2 contents are taken. Now what shift operation needs to be performed that is interpreted in two different ways based on this bit 4 ok. This bit 4 could be 0 or 1 then suppose let us go to the left part of the format if it happens to be 0 then next two bits are interpreted as one of these operations ok either logical shift left or logical right or arithmetic right or rotate right. I told you about these instructions how they differ so based on this bit positions bit values it will interpreted as one of them and then these 5 bits are considered as a, a 5 bit unsigned integer please remember it is an unsigned integer so it could change from 0 to 31. 
Now based on this value it may do that many number of either a logical left, a left or logical right or any of these operations on RM contents. One example I will tell you suppose RM happens to be a 0 what does it mean it is a R0 that is content of R0 is taken. Now assume that this bit positions were 0 0 then logical left has to be done. Now okay it has to do a logical left shift that, okay that means it will fill the uh, like left to right most point uh, bit position as 0. Now assume that this 5 bits happen to have 2 a value of 2 then what it will do it will take the contents of R0 whatever is the value in R0 it will left shift by 2 bit positions and then that result will be used as a operand to the ALU please remember it is after this operation it is taken as a second operand to the ALU. Now based on the opcode it will be taken and then that particular operation will be done and then the result will be written back into R. Now assume if it was in this format then this is 1 so it will interpret this as a shift operations or this needs to be done. But instead of interpreting this 5 bits as a some 5 bit shift operation it will take this as a RS that means it is pointing to one of the registers ok it could be 0 0 to R 4 1 so that means it can be R 0 to R 15 but there are some restrictions that R 15 can be used here but I am telling you you know possibly that there are one of the registers are used and then it will interpret the lower byte of that register has to be taken as a shift operation. So please keep in back of your mind that the interpretation is separate different based on the bit positions the values of this bit. So how it is performed I will show you with example so it will become clear to you ok let us go forward. Now we are going to concentrate on this part of the combination ok. Now I have taken only that portion so you do not have to worry whether it is same or different. Now you are doing any of these operations based on you know the instruction and then the shift amount could be 31 bits which will be sitting here and then logical right fills with logical right ok the bit positions are shifted to right and then the MSP positions will be filled with 0. If it is arithmetic right as I mentioned it will be filled with the sign bit it will be extending the sign bit value if it happens to be 0 it will fill it with 0 if sign bit happens to be 1 it will fill it with the all 1s. No arithmetic left is needed because it is same as logical left I explained to you already. Now let us go one by one I told you that in this particular combination what you have taken RM is coming in one of the RM registered contents are taken in please remember it is not saying RM so contents of RM that means the RM values are not disturbed it is copied and then barrel shifter does some changes to it and then feeds that value into the ALU as an operand 2. Now how much to shift it takes it from the 5 bit value which has come along with the instruction and then based on the 2 bits it will do a logical shift. Now in this case we are taking an example where logical left is 1. Now logical left is this content will be shifted left. Now logical means anyway it will be back filling it is 0 and then whatever bits going out they may affect the carry or may not based on whether S bit is set. That means if you have mentioned a S in your instruction along with this logical shift operation then the last bit which has come out of the shifting may sit in the carry field that ok. The least significant bits of the results are printed with 0 ok you can see this and then whatever bits go out do not map to the result are discarded and the last discarded bit which becomes the shifter carry output which may be latched onto the C bit ok. I will give you an example so that you will understand the last bit coming out of this will latch on to carry flag provided S flag is set that means if you have mentioned the S in your instruction then it will set the carry flag otherwise it may not ok. So let us see an example ok it will become clear. Now I will show you how 
the coding what i mentioned is then here with one instruction then the rest of that you will be able to deduce it by with the help of the simulator i am taking an example of movies first let us understand what this means pre condition and post condition before this instruction is executed now pre condition is assume the carry flag is zero okay and then r2 is already filled with the value all s okay now i have an instruction to say move yes r1 comma r2 comma lsl hash 1 now what is this hash 1 means is a immediate constant com constant coming with the instruction it is coded along with the instruction okay now let us see how this instruction is coded and where this how this bit fields are filled one instruction if you see how it gets filled the rest of it you will be able to understand now okay first of all is there any conditional thing mentioned here if it was move eq then eq condition is mentioned that means it should execute only when zero flag is set but here i have put a move s that means i don't want this instruction to be conditionally executed okay so it should be always executed so the conditional part of that instruction will be 1110 which is meant for always because it is going to be executed irrespective of whatever may be the conditional flag status of the conditional flags okay now because it is a move instruction is a data processing instruction but uh, so this will be zero now see here between uh, it is changing okay now this i is interpreted as zero who is doing this filling this value assembler okay or it could be a compiler if it was you no know, uh, c com you no know, c source file was compiled and then it generated a move as by instruction and then the obj file would have put this value but if you have written an assembly code let us for a, for a, for a example let us assume that you have written an assembly like this then the assembler will generate this particular format based on the instruction what you have given so it has put a i as zero because you are interpreting it as a immediate constant okay and then why you are mentioning a register here rm which will be a zero okay and then you have mentioned r1 here which is a a destination register so you mentioned r1 here so rd will be filled with one and i mentioned s here so i want this instruction to impact the flags so the assembler has promptly put a one here and then i mentioned that it is a move instruction so it has generated an op code which happens to be 1101 for move so so far so good now you may wonder how it has filled zero here because it is a it doesn't use a another format it's a immediate constant format so it has to be a zero now why it has put a zero and it, i call it as a don't care because move instruction doesn't interpret or take this value rn at all because it wants one it is interested only in one operand which is r2 which is passing through the parallel shifter which happens to be rm so rm is filled with two now you see here it is a single operand instruction so it doesn't it has filled the zero but it won't interpret as a valid value and then you it is it knows that r2 is a second operand so it has filled the 0010 in there now it has to interpret this you have mentioned that it is a logical shift left so if you remember uh, previously the lsl this two bits happen to be 00 if it is a logical shift left so it has filled promptly a 00 value and then it now it has left with only filling this constant it is given as one so it has filled to one now i'll ask you one question suppose you have mentioned lsl hash 0 x 0 2 that means you want two positions you want to shift the logical shift you left you want to do on the operator operand 2 so this two will be reflected by filling a value 2 so can you write some 45 0x 7f you can't 
because you have the maximum 0 to 31 here because 5 bit only can be filled into this constant value. So you may wonder if I give by mistake hash 0 x f of a big number assembler will give a warning that for this instruction you are allowed to give only between to you know 0 to 31. So based on that assembler will make sure that these kind of wrong instructions do not even come into the program. So it because if it cannot generate the code for your instruction then it will give a warning. So this is the way the instruction is coded. So I have explained it for one instruction and I urge you to not to interpret every instruction that you have come across because then you will be behaving like an assembler which is very laborious job. But if you do one or two instructions and then see what is the binary code generated for a particular instruction it will give you a better idea. Now you may wonder how do I know where this particular format is I will share the instruction for document an ARM instruction set for document which explains for every instruction what is the format follows. So you can then write a code like this and then look at the generated binary code in the simulator and try to expand that value into bit positions and then map into these positions so that you understand what it generates. If you do it for one or two instructions you will be familiar with anything and you will you will be very comfortable doing it. You may wonder why is it required anyway assembler is doing why should I bother about this kind of bit level values I will tell you when you have to debug your code at the assembly level at the binary level there are some occasions where you may encounter uh, the program crashes or it generates a unknown instruction or it generates uh, about data about in those kind of situations there may be a memory corruption in your embedded processor or that could be wrong can be programmed wrongly. So if you can understand the binary format then you have a good hand handle on how to interpret what is stored in the instruction memory. So you do it for one or two instructions so that you become familiar that on in it is required you will be doing it. So this is the value actually the simulator has then generated and then I have expanded it like this and explained to you and I hope you understand it better. Now let us see what is this actually performing. Now R2 I said that all F's are there that, that means all bits are ones ok all ones. Now you are doing a left shift logical shift left by one bit position that means all ones are here and then you shift out only by one position and then you have mentioned also that uh, yes is there that means it is supposed to impact the carry flag. So what happens the last bit which is coming out of the shift happens to be a 1 because you are doing a only one left shift and then this bit 31 happens to be 1 because f is there that means that 1 will go into the carry flag. So if earlier carry flag was 0 you will see the carry flag is set. Now once s is there it may based on the result in R1 the other flags are also set, but please remember only 0 flag and uh, negative flags are set and uh, overflow flag is not disturbed because it is not in anything to do with the arithmetic operation so now n flag will not be set. So you will see that 0 flag is 0 because the result what you get by shifting it is actually FFF of E that is this value is 1 1 1 0 ok because it is back filling it with a 0 and you shifted it by only 1 bit so 1 0 will enter in the value. So whatever is the shifted value is moved into R1 that is why you see that R1 is having all Fs only with the E the lower nimble is having 1 1 1 0 that means the LS bit is 0 ok, but R2 is un, it's not disturbed it is same as what was there earlier and this flags are set because this result is in MSB is 1 so negative flag is 1 and it is not a 0 so it is 0 flag is 0. So I have taken so much time here to explain this I hope you will you are able to understand it then let us we can go a little faster in the next uh, set of examples ok. Now let us see I want you to hold on to this presentation and try to interpret it yourself 
what you see is correct or no then maybe listening to me will be better now what is the position here also the instruction says i want this to affect the carry flag or zero flag or negative flag and then r2 is filled with a 0 1 and that is a operand rm and left shift logical shift left by two position that is one is move to two position that means 1 0 0 it will become right. So what is 1 0 0 it is 4 so now uh, 1 R1 is having 4 R2 happens to be same 1 and then carry flag and 0 flag I am not going to explain further I, I hope you will understand this okay. Let us go to the next one. One more thing for a, a, a you know this uh, particular format, you are supposed to give the conditional thing if we, if that is required first and then followed by a yes. So this is not accepted as a valid instruction in our assembler also in our simulator also, and uh, I think this is the standard uh, format followed. So operand what may operation needs to be performed and then if conditional things are there EQ, NE or AL whatever give that and then yes flag if it is required. So this is all optional if you want to mention the condition and then whether you want to impact the condition flag you have to mention this yes okay. That. Now there is some unique thing LSL 0 if you say logical shift left by 0 that means you do not want to do any logical shift at all in that case what happens is the previous carry flag is carried forward that means it is kept as the same and then it impacts the other flags ok it is a special condition when you say 0 you do not want to really do any operation on the RM it is a short circuit barrel shifted is not doing anything with your operand so it will interpret it as a no, no operation to be performed. So take an example R2 is the operand to the barrel shifter so R2 is filled with all ones so when you do no shifting it will pass through the same so when it comes into R1 it is same as R2 but carry flag was 0 so it keeps the same value and then S was there so it is disturbing the other 0 and negative flag because the result happens to be FFF 0 flag is 0 and N will be 1 ok. So when you have a hash 0 that means you do not want to do any shift of left operation. So, it is a pass through to the barrel shifter and carry flag is preserved and the rest of the 0 and negative flags are modified ok. So, whenever you mention this kind of instructions in your code you should know exactly what you expect the processor to do otherwise you will have un you will not be able to understand what is happening in the process ok. So, these are all about logical left shift. Now let us see logical shift right ok it is very simple you do the shift operation to the right side of whatever RM comes and then back fill these values with a 0. So when you are right shifting you are reducing the value which was in RM so by reducing it by 2 if you are right shifting it but it could be some big pattern also it may not be a value binary value you may be doing trying to create a pattern in your you know register value so you may do a right shift. But whatever the last bit going out may impact the carry or not based on the yes flag. So this also has the same condition as LSL 32, 31, 0 to 31 as the constant value. You can mention LSR as the operation to be performed, and the last discarded bit is either affecting the carry flag or not based on the yes bit set. That means whether you mentioned yes or not in the with this instruction. I hope you understand this is the same replica of left shift only thing is the bits are now moving to right shift. Now see let us see an example the N is mentioned here LSR 1 now take an example the R1 is initially filled with 1 and then it is shifted by right 1 bit what happened this 1 bit what was 0 0 1 goes out as a carry flag and S is set so it will impact the carry flag ok. But now backfilled with 0 so R1 has only 1 bit set so it is gone out now so R1 will be left with all zeros, which is copied into R0. So R0 will have 0 R1 please understand R1 will not be disturbed so R1 value is same only thing is that value is taken and then shifted right ok. So 
Now, why carry flag is set? Because that one bit which went out is supposed to impact the carry flag because S is there. So, carry flag is set. Now, why zero flag is set? Because you are having the result which is in R0 happens to be a zero. So, it is set. Now, why N flag is set? You, uh, zero because there is no M must be set. So, this is the outcome of LSR. Now, let us see one more example. You have R2 which is one of the operands for the barrel, one only operand to the barrel shifter which happens to be 4 that means 0 x 4 please remember. So, that means 1 0 0. Now, when it is shifted to the right 1 0 0 will become just 1. So, that is why that shifted value which is moving to R1 happens to be 1 and R2 remains same and the carry flag why it is becoming a 0 because what was shifted out was a 0 last shifted out was 0 only because it was 1 0 0 which 2 zeros went out. So, so that 0 flag is set 0 coming out of the shifting is sitting in the carry flag because S is set. So, that is 0 and then 0 flag is 0 because the result is not a 0 value and N is 0 that is it ok. I hope you now understand how to mention LSL or LSR in your code and how to perform it on the RM value register what you have ok. Now, let us see some special interpretation of LSR 0. Please remember LSR 0 means what you do not want to do any shifting at all right, but I also told you LSL 0 which did not want to do any 0 any shifting operation. Now, when you do not want to do any shifting either left or right how does it matter whether you put LSL 0 or LSR, LSR 0 both are same. So, the the ARM processor community the designers have had a, a you know every uh, innovative idea that they wanted to use the LSR 0 as to be interpreted as something different that you are inter interested in doing. Because as a programmer if I do not want a bit pattern that I have in the RM to be not to be disturbed I would have mentioned LSL 0. So, I do not have to have two options to mention the same thing. So, they use this LSR 0 that is logical shift right if you say it is 0 they do not want to interpret it as again ok I do not want to do any shift left right operation and I want to pass on the same value of RM into the ALU. So, they used this pattern for some other purpose. So, in internally assembler will put a 0 only in the constant value, but it will say that it is a LSR operation. Then the processor understands when I have this the processor is supposed to perform a 32 bit of write operation bit position. What does it mean? It will perform a write shift by 32 bit positions ok. What happens? When you it moves all the bit position by 32 values and it is backfilling with all zeros it will wipe off the whole value bit positions in the processor and make it as a 0 right. So, which has a 0 result ok. So, and then what will happen carry out will be the bit 31 coming out. So, if the in the instruction had a S bit set then it will take out that bit and put it in the carry flag. So, what ARM designers have done is if you really want to do this operation I want to right shift the whole bit and I want to backfill everything with 0 and then this MSP bit I want that to be impacted by carry you know that should be written into carry flag then you are supposed to generate a write a code with yes there and then say I want to do LSR 0 ok. Let us see an example if I say LSL 0 it is same as what I explained to you it will not have any impact on the parameters it will pass on the same thing and then carry flag whatever was there it will uh, reflect it 
and zero on the negative flag it may change it based on the result. So you have to use LSL zero when you don't want the parameter to be not the RM values to be not to be disturbed before passing on to the AILU. But if you want LSR 32 to be performed then you write LSR 0 there. You may wonder why can't I write LSR 32 because you, you cannot write 32 because 32 is not cannot be fit into the 5 bit value allocated for this constant. So, assembler will crib. So, you, you it will give a warning or error support it will give a error. So, if you write LSR 0 it will interpret internally the processor will interpret internally that you are interested in performing this 32 bit of write shape and it will do this. Now, take an example suppose if R R 2 was filled with all ones and then I am calling this move S yes, R 1 comma R 2 LSR 0. For a simple programmer it may look like I am not doing anything no shift operation right I do not want to do anything shift 0 and I am supposed to get R 2 as R 1, but you are not going to get it. It is internally performing a 32 bit of right shift and it will fill all the values that we had once with zeros. So, R 1 will be having a 0, R 2 will anyway be intact and then the last MSB bit which was happens to be 1 went out of the register and because it is saying I want to impact the carry flag it will be written into carry flag. So, carry flag will become 1 and result happens to be 0. So, z 0 flag will be 1 and n will be 0. Please remember you should know the difference between these two they are not same and why they have interpret put it in a different format because they do not want to waste one combination which is does the same job as the LSL. So, this is a very uh, innovative encoding of instruction. Okay, I hope you understand this difference. Now, let us switch over to arithmetic write. Okay, you will represent this as arithmetic shift write. Okay, now I mentioned to you in the beginning, it will whatever is the sign flag, that sign bit, okay, MSB bit will be copied on. That's why it is shown like uh, the same thing is coming here. And then whatever goes out either the last bit going out will be affecting the carry flag based on what you want to do with the carry flag. If you want that to affect it then you have to mention yes. Now, let us take an example here so that you make this concept is clear. I have not put S here that means I do not want this bit going out of this right shape to be impacting the carry flag. So, then what I want to do whatever is the content of R1 this is the content of R1 I want to do a arithmetic shift write by 1 bit. Now, what is C? C is 12 ok hexadecimal 12 is represented by how 1 1 0 0 please ok you should be able to just when you see the assembly uh, hexadecimal value you should be able to just get the value ok. C is 12 that is 8 plus 4 is 12. So, 110 is the last nibble. Now, when I do arithmetic shift right by 1 bit this will become 1 and this will be 0. So, what is this value it is E right. So, your R 1 shifted value is moved into R 0 which happens to be F of E because why it is F of because it is doing a sign extension. So, it is arithmetic shift. So, it will be filling it with the ones. So, you will get F of E and R1 you will see the same and flags are not affected because there is no yes. I hope you understand this. If you do not, please listen again. Uh, one second, let me erase this. Okay. Now, let us see one more example so that you understand it fully. R2 is filled with 4 and I am trying to do a arithmetic shift right. Now, what is the MSB here? What is the sign flag of this R2 here? It happens to be 0. So, when this is copied and then shifted right, it will be back filled with a 0 and it is shifting it by 2 positions. So, 1 0 0 will become just 1. So, R1 will become 1, R2 will be 4 and the flags are not affected because you did not want the 
yes here so this is not going to impact the flags I hope you understand this arithmetic shift right and arithmetic shift right okay with the RM value okay let me tell you there is one special condition again here similar to LSR the reason being they wanted to make use of this pattern ASR0 again if it conveys that you are not doing any operation with the shipping you could have used LSL0 right. So ASR0 is again interpreted as ASR32 it is same as the previous one what I showed you LSR also ok. So ASR what does it do if you have mentioned ASR as 0 it will do a 32 bit of arithmetic shift because it is different from 32 bit of logical shift ok. Let us take an example suppose you have mentioned R1 happens to be 8 all zeros. 8 means what 1 0 0 0 that means MSB is set to 1 this is the RM so that is a parameter operand which is passed to the barrel shifter and it says ASR 0 actually it is not performing a 0 arithmetic that means no up, up, uh, shift at all it is performing a 32 bit of arithmetic shift to right. So what is arithmetic shift right it is supposed to backfill it with the carry flag. Now because carry flag is set here it will backfill it with all one and it will do it for 32 times then that, that one would have propagated all through the register ok and it would have had all all will would have become one now ok and this carry also will come out but because I mentioned as no yes here so it will not impact the carry flag but R0 will be with filled with zeros ok. It is a very easy way of doing a 0 here ok. So when you have this value and then when you do your arithmetic shift right 0 it is doing a 32 bit of shift arithmetic shift right ok. So why ARM has decided to use this hash 0 as 32 bit shift because 32 cannot be written into it and 0 if you write it is same as LSL 0. So they made use of that particular combination to perform this operation ok. Let us see one more example if suppose move S is there and R1 is filled with see please remember I am taking only R0 or R1 it does not mean that you can do only with R0 you can do with any register please remember but R15 is always a special thing because it is a PC but you can free to use R3 or R4 or R5 or any operand it could also be the same operand you can say R1 comma R1 no problem why it is always before doing any arithmetic operation it is copying the value from register ok. So you can as well write into the same register only thing is the previous value will be overwritten but you, you are free to use the same operands here the R0 comma R0 is a valid instruction please remember that you try out multiple combinations so that you understand that. And uh, now ASR0 you have mentioned then what happens is this 1100 C is again 1100 which will go through all the bits so it will all become 1 and then finally that MSB bit is coming out as 1 which will impact the carry flag because I mentioned yes ok because earlier it was 0 it will become 1 and the other things are you can interpret it because R0 is this value so this will be the state of the carry flags and the negative flag. I hope you understand this uniqueness of this instruction let us go to rotate right um, it is another logical operation where you still know what we were doing is a shifting of the bit it all all the bits were going out and then the last bit which was going out was either impacting a carry flag or not. But suppose if there is a need for you to rotate the bit that means you want the LSB bit to come back into 31 then there is a provision for that. Now only rotate right is there because you may wonder why rotate left is not there because it is not needed if you want to do a rotate left by 1 bit you could do the same performance by rotate right bit that you want. So no, you can always do the same uh, what you want to do maybe you may have to do so many rotations 
but it does not matter. So, you can do it with the only rotate right. So, there is only rotate right which is supported and please remember one more thing the uniqueness of barrel shifter is that any of these operations are not performed in multiple clock cycle it is all done in single phase itself. It does not matter whether you are rotating it by 2 bits or 5 bits or 10 bits or 30 bits ok. Everything is done in a single phase of clock or a single clock cycle. So, it, it does not take more time to perform more rotation please do not think that if I do 10 bits of rotation it will take 10 clock cycles. If I do 5 bit of rotation it will take 5 clock cycles please do not think that way is all the barrel shifter is designed such a way that any number of bit rotations can be performed in a single phase of the two phase clock cycle ok. So, within a cycle this barrel shifter does the job and then feeds that value into the ALU for ALU to perform the operation. So, this constant what you mentioned does not impact the number of cycles the instruction takes. This is very important point which I am not mentioned so far I thought it is the right place to mention it please keep in mind this ok. Let us see an example of rotate right. Suppose you have a R 0 with a 1 and you want to do a R O R with 1 bit that means you want to rotate it by 1 bit what happens this 1 bit which is LSB has to go out and then sit in the 31 bit position ok. So, when you do this operation R 1 which is a destination register becomes 8 0 0 0 why this 1 bit which LSB came out and sat as a MSB bit because there is no yes I am not showing a flag otherwise it would have set a two things it would have set a carry flag also because this 1 bit which was going out will impact the carry flag and because it comes and sits in the MSB bit it would have set the negative flag also N flag also would have been set, but 0 would have been um, a 0 because the value is 1 it is not a 0. So, because S is not there the flags are not impacted, so rotate operation is performed ok. I hope you understand this let us see one more example to make uh, your understanding clear. I have put a move S here R 1 comma R 0 R O R 0 2 that means this bit position 1 1 sorry 0 0 1 1 is the nibble wire nibble which is rotated by 2 bit position that means both the 1 1 will come out and then they will enter into this bit it will become 1 1 here. So, it is effectively a C here. So, the result R 1 will be C all zeros and then the flag will be 1 because carry flag will be set because last carry which, which last bit which went out happens to be a 1. So, it will be set and N is set because M is set and ok. So, this is all about rotate. Now, again in rotate R over 0 again you now you can mention that I do not want any rotation at all with is you know by mentioning 0, but again on um, interpret this as a separate instruction as a unique instruction which is called rotate right extender ok. It is same as LSR, ASR and ROR for all of these uh, instructions there is a 0 is interpreted as a separate instruction. So, what does it do ROR 0 x is interpreted as extended and what I mean by extended means it will take this 32 value of RM into you know as one 32 bit value and then the carry flag as a 33rd bit and then it does a rotate right. How many bits it does? It does only one bit. It is basically to bring in the carry into the value ok and and throw that value which were which was LSB into carry bit. So, it is basically carry bit is also considered as uh, along with the 32 value and then it does a 33 bit of rotation actually this bit going out is sitting in carry flag and then carry flag comes into it. So, you can call it as a, a 33 bit of quantity of write, but it is just only one because you cannot you have only one constant and you cannot mention that I want to do this you know n number of times where there is no place for you to code it for the assembler to encode it. So, you can it will only interpret it as a 1 bit 33 bit of right shift or rotate ok. So, take an example carry flag was 0 and C 0 0 1 was there this 1 will go and sit in carry flag ok and then this C 1 1 will move into 0 
one one because carry flag will come in, so it will become carry flag will be one and then it will become zero one one all zero. So that zero one one zero is a six actually. You know, if uh, so R one will become six all zeros and carry flag will be set because this one M LSB went out as a carry bit and the result will be like this. So this is called rotate right extender. So if you want to mention this, you have to mention this R O R hash zero if you want to perform this operation in your assembly for some purpose. Okay. So this comes to a end of all the rotation. So one one zero zero becomes zero one one zero, which happens to be six. Okay. Now let us go back to our original operands, how they are interpreted. So far, what we have seen is this part of the story. Okay, this part of the story we saw. We saw all the logical left, logical right, arithmetic right, rotate right, and then unique hash zero was there in each of them. How they are interpreted as 32-bit values or right rotate extender. We saw for this part of the interpretation of the code. Now, what is the difference between this and this? In this case, the barrel shifter was getting the shift operation anyway part of the instruction. Both are actually shift operation. What needs to be performed is anyway is part of the instruction itself. But it was interpreting this as a 35 bit constant value, which is coming in as in into a, the barrel shifter through the instruction, and then it was operating on the RM value based on this. How many bits have to be rotated or shifted left or whatever? Now suppose I want to do more than a 31 bit of operations. Okay, there it had a restriction that I cannot give a rotation or a shift left beyond 31 bit values, right? I, if I want to rotate it by say 45 bits, you may wonder why is it required, but there may be. I will tell you, you know, how it can be interpreted. But if if that needs to be performed. This instruction format does not allow me to do, so there is a way to do it means you, you have to use one more register which is called a RS a shift register. You can mention that one of the registers as a shift register and then put this how much of shifting or rotating you want to do in the that shift register the lower LS byte of that shift register you mention the value then the processor will read it from that and then perform that many kind of operation. So it will perform all the operations that you are want to do, but only thing is it will take that constant shifting operation how many times it has to be shifted it will take it from the RS register and that also from the lower byte of the register please understand this ok. Now let us see the different combinations of this let us go a little faster because it is simpler. Um, so you can mention any register as RS except for R15 of course and then suppose if you say RS if it and the RS has 0 suppose you mentioned as R1 and then R1 LS byte was 0 it will not perform any operation it will just quietly come out or means it will pass on the value of RM without any making any changes to it ok. And then if value is between 1 and 31 it will be similar to whatever we have seen so far ok. So it will be behaving the same way only thing is you will be using up one more register for your for this operation. Now where is this format is useful only when you want to do some operation which is more than 31 bits. Let us see some examples for it and how to inter, you know how to mention it. Now here here again move is a single operand instruction because it it only takes R1 RM as an operand, but only thing is R0 is actually for the barrel shifter to operate on R1 and then pass on the value to R2. Now assume that R0 was having a value 1 ok, now R1 is having a 0 2 this is the value. Now what is this instruction is saying the processor is? Take the value which is in R0, the lower byte value, okay, and that many times you perform this LSL operation, okay, on R1 content, okay. Take R1 content and then do a left shift, logical shift left by 
as many times that is mentioned in R0 and then write the value into R2. Now for this combination of the value what is it supposed to do? It is supposed to do a one bit of logical shift left which of this value because R1 happens you have 2 if it a logical shift left if it does it will become 4. So R2 becomes 4 R1 and R0 are not changed ok please remember these are all treated as a inputs to the barrel shifter they are not modifying them. So if you write the instruction like this instead of immediate constant you are mentioning a register then it will take the value from the register. So this R0 can be any register again and uh, uh, now it could be same as other para operands also but you should be aware of what you want to do ok. I in I urge you to change these parameters give all of them same or different and then you know initialize these registers with the previously with some values known values so that you understand what is happening with the instruction. You have to try out multiple combinations there are so many combinations available. So you try out all this so that you understand what happens with the different instructions. Now another example I have given you LSL R0. Now R0 is filled with F1, F1 is what? It is a huge number ok. So that many times it wants to do a right shift uh, sorry left shift logical left shift. So it is equivalent to doing it over and over again. Now what happens RM when it is copied the R1 value is uh, happens to be 0 to 2 to start with but once it does a logical left shift it will be filling it with all zeros. So effectively it will be performing a rotate operate uh, left shift operation zero, you know so many times but actually inside the processor it there is no point in doing that uh, rotation blindly more than 32 times right. So it will effectively give you the value which have what you will like get likely to get when you do this many times and then it will uh, reflect the value. So in here what happens it will be all zeros and then flags are not impacted so that is what you will get. Now what happens here another example arithmetic shift right with a zip R0 happens to have a 1 F1 that means this 1 1 will be filled with all bits. So you will get effectively all F, no, FF in the R2 ok that is what you see. Now there are some unique combinations LSL by 32 has a result 0 why because it will be filling all the bit position with the 0 so you will have finally land uh, end up with all zeros in that bit position ok. And LSL by more than 32 has a result 0 and carry out also 0 the difference between these two is the carry would be 32 bit the MSB bit will be carry bit uh, if you do it more than one time then you will get all 0 so carry will be 0 here. So I want you to try out all these combinations and see to yourself what happens. Okay. LSR 32 has a result 0 with the carry which is coming out of 31 bit as uh, out of RM will set the carry based on whether you have put a S or not in the instruction. LSR is the same as the LSL only thing is all will be 0. ASR will have the sign bit extended to all through the bits and the last will also be based on the carry in a bay you know MSP set or not you will have a carry bit set or not based on S flag also. Rotate right that is the same thing but it does more than 32 times ok. So what effectively when you write a value which is more than 32 in a register and then give it as a parameter it actually does a n mod of 32 ok. Effective what you see will be after one rotation is done it will be n mod. So please remember it will do the 32 bit of operation and then n mod. So it is not just the n mod. So it will do completely 32 bit times and then the uh, result will be what you see. So effectively it will be all zeros are carry bit ok. Maybe I should remove this n mod because you may think that you know it will do only n mod actually. No, please uh, remove this n mod. Uh, it will do 32 times and then uh, whatever is remaining uh, bit is there it will do that rotation and leave that and it will be either all zeros or all ones based on the carry flag uh, the MSB bit was set ok. So this are all about the combination 
which was mentioned as zero that is the one of the operand was coming from rm now another combination is when you have everything is mentioned as a immediate value so it is a special condition that means this rm is not used at all because if you see in this combination there is no rm mentioned here and this one is actually i bit okay if i bit was set to one this 12 bit is interpreted as some rotate operation on some immediate constant which happens to be a 8 bit value and all of them is coming from the instruction as an immediate value and no rm is taken that means no register contents are taken for the barrel sheet operation and then it will perform the operations based on the bit positions which are mentioned here. Now let us see how this is interpreted. This 12 bits are interpreted as lower 8 bits are for immediate value. So the shifting operation is taken from this value whatever you mention it as a this byte value and then how much to do a operation is always rotate here. Please remember that it is always rotate and that is also rotate right. Okay. So I will tell you how it is interpreted. This value whatever is mentioned is multiplied by 2 and then taken as a rotation and then used as an operand 2 for the ALU. So if you do not understand now please wait you know in the next uh, <coughs> example you will be able to understand it. Only thing is you have to remember that this is another format based on this bit position it will be interpreted in a different way ok. So there is no RM here this is an immediate value with a rotate some 4 bit content saying that how much to rotate. Let us see the first of all let us try to understand the problem here an arbitrary 32 bit value suppose you want to fill a register with the arbitrary 32 bit value you cannot do it because you have a restriction that the whole instruction itself is 32 bit how can you fit in yeah another arbitrary 32 bit value into it because an instruction cannot go beyond yet one 32 bit value ok you cannot have a 8 byte instruction you can have only 4 byte instruction that means instruction length cannot be more than 4 bytes because it is a risk architecture and we did not want to complicate the ARM processor uh, decode logic should not be complicated because varying length of instruction is uh, similar to a CISC instruction right. So if you want to pass on a huge constant into an instruction that cannot can't be done because you cannot fit in a 32 bit constant into a 32 bit instruction. So there is a restriction that you can give a 8 bit value and then say some bit rotations so that some value of 32 bit constant can be copied into a register let us see how it can be done. So the instruction allows 12 bit of location so you use the 8 bit value here as an immediate constant and then use a 4 bit to give some instruction to the barrel shifter say you do some operation on this immediate 8 bit value so that I get the pattern that I want ok. So what is that rotated rotate I want I want the rotation to be performed on this 8 bit value ok and when you are doing it please 0 extend this immediate value ok do not do any sign extension because I am giving only this 8 bit value so the barrel shifter needs a 32 bit input. So extend this 8 bit value into all zeros so the L you know MS part of it you know most significant part of it will be filled with zeros and take only this 8 bit that I give you and then rotate it by this many number of times as I mentioned to you. So suppose it is not the same number of bits positions I give this 4 bit position suppose I say 1 please take it as a 2 if I say 2 multiply it with the 2 and then I understand it as a 4 bit rotate ok and do the rotation on this 8 bit value that I have given you ok still if you do not follow do not worry with the next example you will be able to understand. Now suppose I want to write this constant into a register suppose move r0 comma hash 0x 000ff now if this is a 8 32 bit value ok actually it is a 32 bit value now what does assembler do it looks at the value and it knows that ok the most significant the information is in this f only the one byte of value is you know is very important. So let me take that immediate value that 8 bit value into this location and then say I want to rotate it by 0 times 
So what the barrel shifter does, it takes this FF internally, zero extends this value to 32 bit value and then does not do any rotation. So effectively you have got a 32 bit value getting as an operand to the ALU and if it is a move instruction it will be just passed on to RD and then it will move into the register R0 what I mentioned to you. So effectively you are the as a arm assembler allows you to give a 32 bit value, but there are some restrictions it can't be anything that you think you want to do. Now suppose you want to do this constant value, now how can this be constructed internally because you are giving this FF, but when it is interpreted into the instruction it will put this FF and then 0 extend it with all 0 that means this FF will sit in the LS byte of the barrel shift shifters input, but it will say in the rotate saying that I am giving a E, E is what actually it is a 14, so it will put E here that means this 14 will be multiplied by 2 that is 28 and then it will do a rotate right this FF rotate you remember this bit position whatever comes out of 32 bit will come into the MSB part of it, so this FF will pass on and then come back like this and then process 28 bits why 28 times because only 4 bits are left here, so 28 times if this FF moves it should have come here please you know try to do it with the paper then you will understand this. So what the ARM assembler has done is it has effectively allowed you to mention this pattern with the restriction that only 12 bits are, 12 bits are allowed for the constant. Okay, so but all patterns cannot be given, but some patterns can be, and it is able to do this. Now you may wonder, can I give instead of FF? Can I give something else? Yes, of course. From 0, 0 to FF, you can give. Only thing is, it should be a byte value. Okay, any pattern you have should not be more than a byte. It can sit anywhere because you have a flexibility here. You can rotate it by double the time of what you have. So you cannot do it odd number of rotation you cannot perform, but even number of rotations you can perform because I tell you whatever value you are giving here is multiplied by 2 and then that many rotations are done, done. so only whatever values you get will be a powers of 2 ok, ok let us say take one more example if I have a I want FF to be loaded effectively you will be as a programmer you will be mentioning it as this constant and internally assembler generates this pattern and puts it into you do not have to do this. So in assembler will put a 4 here and then FF here, what does it mean 4 into 2 that means 8 rotation to the right, so it will effectively sitting the FF will be here to start with in the barrel shifter and then it will go 8 bit rotated, so it will say uh, no come back into the MS byte of the value and then goes into the ALU ok, so you can effectively get this pattern also implemented, can I do this of course you can do, but what you do? you only rotate it by 4 times, so FF will be rotated by 4 times, so this one will be here and other 4 F will come back you know into MS nibble, so you will get this pattern, so you can see that some patterns are possible, instead of FF you can put any value, but you can do only some patterns, now I have done for these patterns, now I will give you an exercise for doing this pattern, try it out for some time then listen to the lecture again ok, is it possible to code them like this ok, if you have all concluded that it is not possible you are right, it is not possible because first of all this pattern is more than 8 bit wide, so you cannot fit into this immediate constant, whatever rotation you do if you cannot fit in that 8 bit value anyway you cannot generate this constant, so now if you say I, in your code if you are use this constant assembler will give a error that it is not possible, so you may have to use some other way of passing this value and then rotating it you know into two registers and then do perform this operation, you cannot do it in one single instruction, can you do this, can you do this, none of these combinations are possible ok. So I hope you understood this, I want you to 
try out different constants and then see the instruction generated by the simulator and see whether you can map it to this value whether you can you understand what it is doing if you can yes you have understood this concept pretty well. So, I am sure uh, you will be able to follow this thing. So, let me just summarize this an assembler will convert big values to a rotated form impossible values will cause an error. Now, assembler may also in, you know if you give move and then it may change it to M E N. If you remember M E N I said that M E N is what the value what you passed is negated and then passed on to the value. So, if it was 0 it will negate that to F F and then put it into R 0. So, if suppose you have mentioned move R 0 comma this it is not possible to do it with the previous format I showed you, but assembler will understand that ok I can do the same thing with the move M E N instruction. So, it may try to do this and it will not still give a warning ok, but it, it will not be true if you uh, put some other pattern ok. So, I am giving another example if suppose you are given you know this constant to be put into R 1 it will be 4 and F of will be put into the constant value and then it will perform the operation ok. And if it happens to be a E 0 0 0 this E E will be put here and then how many times you have to rotate E will be here it has to 16 times it has to rotate right then the E E will go out and come back again and sit here. Now, 16 can be represented by 8 here. So, it will be multiplied by 2 and then it will do a rotate right. I hope you understood this and uh, if you try it out multiple times I am sure you will be able to uh, appreciate this. Concept. So, I am sorry for taking more time I thought these are all related topics it is better we cover it in one session. I hope you kept your interest alive throughout the discussion and uh, I am pretty sure if you try out all these things you will be really enjoying this ok. Um, so, this will not be covered later on ok this will be appearing in any kind of operations either and or no move or any data processing instruction you will see this. Whenever you see this you have to remember that it is on the RM operand which is coming and then the barrel shifter is performing the job and feeding it to ALU this you should remember always and then apart from that ALU will perform some other operation, but this is what you are preparing the operands for the ALU. So, what all you can do is what is has been discussed now. So, we are ready to now go into other part of the instructions I am sure you will encounter a lot of interesting aspects and understanding this way things how it is interpreted inside of you know implemented inside a processor gives you a lot of idea about what you write in a high level language like C or C or C plus plus and how it is converted into an assembly and how the processor is interpreting it. So, it is a very nice feeling to understand this I hope uh, this lecture was useful for you guys please try it out I am sure you will be you know having a good understanding of this ok. Thank you very much for your attention see you in the next section with this we come to the end of the session 7 have a nice day enjoy your lunch session thank you very much for your attention